Sam Wilson, war hero, patriot, movie star, DIA innovator. There is little doubt that the Soviet Union did embark upon a bold venture to establish a list of key regime leaders who must be pursued and brought to justice. Sam Wilson became the fifth director of the Defense Intelligence Agency in 1976. Although his tenure was short, just 15 months, his impact was significant. He is instrumental in forming Special Operations Forces. Delta is much of his work, but he's the first one to have actually been cited as using the term counterinsurgency. He joined the National Guard as a bugler at 16. At 18, he has the distinction of being the youngest second lieutenant in the United States Army. His affinity to intelligence operations could be traced back to World War II, when he answered a presidential call for volunteers for a dangerous and hazardous mission. You can look back on your life and recognize certain forks in the road, certain turning points. Certainly one of the turning points happened 1943-44, behind the Japanese lines in Burma, with an outfit which subsequently became known to the world through the press as Merrill's Marauders. I was Merrill's intelligence and reconnaissance officer as a 19-year-old first lieutenant. The unit became the first engagement of U.S. ground combat forces in Asia and gained notoriety for its deep penetration missions behind Japanese lines, often engaging Japanese forces superior in number. The conditions for the Marauders was atrocious, to put it the least. Of the nearly 3,000 men that went into combat, only about 100 were still standing when it was all over. I've always figured my number was number 99. Despite heavy casualties, Wilson fought valiantly with the Marauder, capturing a critical Japanese airbase in 1944, paving the way for the Allies and eventual victory. The heroics of the Marauders are the stuff books are written about and eventually made into movies. Such was the case when Merle's Marauders was released in 1962. Sam Wilson went from being behind enemy lines to finding himself in front of a movie camera. Hollywood wants to make this film. It is known that Sam Wilson is a person you have to go to to consult. He was hired as a technical advisor and appeared in 11 scenes. The film was a critical and financial success, but General Sam's future wouldn't be in Hollywood. Instead, it took him to a very different location. He was assigned in 1971 as the defense attaché to Moscow. He knew the language fluently, he knew the culture, and he committed himself to winning over his adversaries, his counterparts. My job is to study the Soviet Armed Forces, your strengths and your weaknesses, and to pay special attention to Russian American, your intentions. By 1973, when Wilson became Deputy Director of Estimates and then head of the attaches covering 85 countries, he instituted the use of unclassified sources that enhanced production of DIA intelligence and analysis. Intelligence means nothing if it has not been interpreted. The key arena, as far as I am concerned, is the arena occupied by the analyst. That's where the most important person sits. And his name is not James Bond, his name is Sherlock Holmes. James Bond's sexy, everybody, the car chases and all that. But he would say, if you're ever being chased in the car, you probably have failed. By 1976, when General Wilson became DIA director, the agency faced an existential threat. He helped DIA weather congressional efforts to eliminate it during a period of turmoil for American intelligence agencies. I worked very hard to hold the organization together. 
reining in the service intelligence chiefs. There were some of them who wanted to see DIA voted out of existence, which would have been a terrible mistake. After leaving the DIA in 1977, Sam Wilson came home to Rice, Virginia. On that same day, he retraced the steps that he took as a 16-year-old traveling the seven miles to Farmville, where he first enlisted nearly 40 years earlier. He had served all over the world, but his mission wasn't complete just yet. He chose to come back here and not just retire, but to work here. He wanted to give back and give back in everything that he did. And in that way, he was the consummate educator. From 1992 to 2000, Sam Wilson served as the 22nd president of Hampton Sydney College. The college named the Wilson Center in his honor, paving the way for future national security leaders. Was he a patriot? when you look at his service with Merrill's Marauders. What he was doing in Eastern Europe for this country, what he was doing in Vietnam, later with the CIA and DIA. The answer obviously has to be yes. 